بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Peace and blessings be upon you Thank you for joining us for another episode of Quran for All Seasons I am your host Joseph Lombard Professor of Quranic Studies in the College of Islamic Studies at Hamad bin Khalifa University in Doha In this episode we will discuss Surat Al-Kawthar, which is the 108th surah of the Qur'an and also the shortest surah of the Qur'an. But as we will see in studying this surah, these short surahs are in a sense designed to contain an abundance of God's message in a brief passage that one can recite in prayer. Surat Al-Kawthar is believed by most to be from the early Meccan period, According to Al-Wahidi's Occasions of Revelation, Asbab and Azul, this surah was revealed in response to the criticism of Al-As bin Wa'il al-Sahmi. He would say of the Prophet wasallam, Leave him be. He is a man with no posterity. He has no offspring. Were he to die, no one would mention him again, and you would be rid of him. God then responded to such criticisms by revealing this surah. According to another account, Anas bin Malik reported that this surah was revealed in Medina. He said, When we were with the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, in the mosque, he fell into a slumber. Then he lifted his head smiling. We asked, O Messenger of God, what has caused you to smile? He replied, A surah was revealed to me. Then he recited Surat al-Kawthar and asked, Do you know what al-Kawthar is? It is a river that my Lord has promised me, and it has abundant good. It is a pool to which my Ummah will be brought on the Day of Judgment. Its containers are as numerous as the stars of the sky. While this second account is better attested in the Hadith collections, the two accounts can be reconciled by understanding the second as an instance when the Prophet was informing his followers of a revelation that he had received prior to that event, not necessarily at that very moment. This is in fact something that often happens when one has contrasting occasions of revelation, a topic for another time. The placement of Surat al-Kawthar after Surat al-Ma'un provides a stark contrast between the bountiful generosity of God and his messenger and the stingy and rapacious nature of the Meccan leaders. Whereas the Meccans had established a corrupt social order that withheld food and even small kindnesses, al-ma'un, from the destitute, Islam established a social order in which the believer is in part defined as one in whose wealth is an acknowledged due for the beggar and the deprived. الَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ Surat al-Kawthar can also be contrasted with Surat al-Takathur, the 102nd surah of the Qur'an. The words Kawthar and Takathur derive from the same root, Kathara, ka tha ra Kathara means to increase. But these two words are used in very different ways in the Qur'an, ways which help us to reflect upon the fundamental difference between seeking abundance for the sake of this world and seeking abundance for the sake of God and the abundance of the life to come. To Kathur is vying for increase in a manner which disperses the human being, distracting one from the good and from the truth, rather than abiding in the abundance that God has promised for those who believe and perform righteous deeds. Regarding the meaning of Takathur, God says in verse 20 of Surah Al-Hadid, Surah 57, Know that the life of this world is but play, diversion, ornament, tafakhurun baynukum, boasting to one another, and vying for increase to kathur, fil amwali wal awlad, in property and children. The likeness of rain, whose vegetation impresses the farmers, then it withers, such that you see it turn yellow, then it becomes shad. In the hereafter, there shall be severe punishment, forgiveness from God, 
and contentment, and the life of this world is but the enjoyment of delusion. Truly, we have given you abundance. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. Truly, the one who derides you shall be the one without posterity. That verse 1 is in the past tense, we have given, rather than in the future tense, we shall give, indicates that this abundance and thus these blessings have been promised by God and that God will not break this promise. Abundance, as mentioned in the introduction, translates kautar, which indicates something in which there is abounding infinite goodness. Abundance upon abundance, kathir al kathir. As such, it is subject to multiple interpretations, all of which identify aspects of the great bounty that God bestows upon the Prophet and upon the believers. Among these interpretations are the bounty of prophethood, the Qur'an, the religion of Islam, knowledge, ma'rifa, of God's lordship, rububiyyah, and, as several commentators have written, a light in the Prophet's heart that leads him to God and cuts him off from all else. The most widespread interpretation is that al kawthar refers to a river in paradise and the pool at which the Prophet will meet his followers on the Day of Judgment. Anas bin Malik reported that the Prophet said of his ascent to heaven during the Mi'raj, which we will discuss in Surah uh, 17, that is Surah al-Isra, I came upon a river, the banks of which were made of tents of hollow pearls. I asked the angel Gabriel, what is this river? And he replied, this is Kauthar. In another account, the prophet told his companions, El Kauthar is a river in the garden whose banks are gold. It flows over with pearls and rubies. Its scent is finer than musk, and its water is sweeter than honey and whiter than milk. Now, Afatlebi and Er Kurtubi, two commentators, early commentators, or commentators from the middle period, provide a list of 16 interpretations of Al-Kawthar, while the 19th century commentator, Al-Alusi, states that there are 26 different interpretations of Al-Kawthar. Abu Hayyan al Garnati addresses this issue, saying that none of the various interpretations are meant to limit the understanding of al kawthar to any single one of these things. Rather, they indicate the various aspects of the abundance bestowed by God upon the Prophet and his followers in this world and in the next. In this vein, the 18th century Ottoman commentator, al Burusawi, writes that al kawthar comprises all the blessings of God, the outward and the inward. Among the outward, are the good things of this world and the hereafter, and among the inward is knowledge bestowed directly from God's presence and in Aladuni through God's divine outpouring. The injunction to pray in verse 2 is understood by many commentators as a reference to the five daily prayers. Others interpret it as a reference to the Eid prayer that marks the end of the Hajj, Eid al-Adha, the Feast of the Sacrifice, or to the morning prayer on the plain of Muzdalifa during the Hajj. Similarly, the injunction to sacrifice is understood by many commentators as a reference to the sacrifice on Eid al-Adha. The word here used for sacrifice, anhar, refers to sacrificing a camel, as one slices upwards when one is doing that, the type of sacrifice referred to in Anhara. So it refers to sacrificing a camel, while the word for sacrificing smaller animals, such as a ram or a goat, is what is referred to with the word Adha, the Eid al-Adha. 
the sacrifice here in this verse thus implies sacrificing something of great value, the value of a camel being many times greater than that of a ram or a goat, especially in Arabia at this time. Ismail Haqqi al-Burusawi takes a broader view of the injunctions in this verse, the injunctions to pray and to sacrifice, seeing it as a contrast to the type of prayer mentioned in the previous surah, Surah Al-Ma'un, the last verses of which read, فَوَيْنٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ So woe unto those who pray, while heedless of their prayers, those who strive to be seen, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاعُونَ yet refuse small kindnesses. True Salat, according to al Burusawi, encompasses all dimensions of gratitude. Gratitude with the heart, which is to know that the blessings are all from God and none other. Gratitude with the tongue, which is to praise and extol the, bestow the bestower of blessings. And gratitude with the limbs, or shall we say with actions, which is to serve the bestower of blessings and to be humble before him. In this sense, Al-Burusawi sees the command to pray as a command to recognize all dimensions of God's abundance with all aspects of our being. As regards the injunction to sacrifice, Al-Burusawi writes, sacrifice the body of your Inus and your ego, your Ananiya and your Inniya. From this perspective, what defines the prayer of those who are heedless, those referred to in the previous surah of their prayer, and who strive to be seen, is that they have no gratitude for the abundance, for the kawthar that God has provided them, and they do not submit their egos and sacrifice their Inus to God. Sincerity in prayer requires that it truly be for God alone. Now, as seen in the Surah introduction, the one who derides you is understood by most as a reference to Al-As -Al bin Wa'il al-Sahmi, who said of the Prophet, Leave him be, he is a man without posterity. As a Tabari states, even though this verse was revealed in response to the criticisms issued by a specific person. It applies to all those who criticize the Prophet. By extension, it can be understood to apply to all those who question the abundant bounty of that which the Prophet brings and the bounty of those who extend these blessings or to whom God extends these blessings. The Arabic word shani'a from shani'aka indicates someone who despises and criticizes without reason, without logic, and thus someone who would criticize you and deride you no matter what. Such a person is one who should be ignored in all instances. There is no substance to what one such a person says. The one without posterity translates al-abtar, a word used by the Arabs to indicate one who had no sons or even to indicate one who had been castrated. In this sense, it was a truly callous insult because according to the occasions of revelation, some say it came soon after the prophet's first son, Qasim, had passed away as while still a toddler. And as anyone knows, this is the greatest pain that one can suffer in this life is the death of a child, a'udhu billah. Now, the manner in which God turns the insult back upon the one who issued it demonstrates that extending insults to those who bring abundant good reduces one to a situation where even one's good deeds have no issue or are abtar. It also serves as an injunction to all who practice religion to not heed their detractors. Anyone who makes a serious commitment to practice their religion with sincerity will inevitably find that there are some who seek to dissuade them from their course of action. In this vein, the commentator Ibn Barajan 
links this last verse of Surah Al-Kawthar to the last verses of Surah Al-Hijr. And certainly we know that your breast is straightened because of what they say. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّقَ يَدِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ or we could say, by what they say. Then God commands, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُنْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ So him the praise of your Lord, be among those who prostrate, and worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ In some ways, the whole of Surah Al-Kawthar can be understood as a commentary on the human condition. God has given us great abundance. Everything that any human being has ultimately comes from God. The call to reflect upon this abundance is one of the reasons why the Qur'an constantly reminds us to reflect upon the signs of God within ourselves and within all that exists. To partake of this abundance, the human being must, on the one hand, awaken and turn to God in complete gratitude, and on the other hand, curtail the avaricious inclinations of the soul, the soul which commands to evil, nafs al amara bisu'. This is the soul that seeks to be dispersed into Kathur, where it sees what it has attained as a result of its own efforts rather than to abide in Kawthar, where one knows that all that one has comes from God, and that one can therefore trust in God. Akulu hadha wa astaghfirullah. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Qur'an for All Seasons. This episode was brought to you by a generous grant from the Radius Foundation. If you found this to be of benefit, please take the time to subscribe and to write a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever podcasting format you may use. Thank you again for your support.